This is an entire semester of a data structures and algorithms course in 12 minutes starting now. Data structures are different ways that we can store and use and organize data while algorithms are step-by-step -step instructions on how we operate on said data. And one of the most famous and useful data structures are gonna be your hash tables and dictionaries. And the idea is that you wanna map each value in our collection of values to a unique key from which you can index in our data structure, in our hash map or dictionary to that unique value. However, if you have a key that maps to two or more values, you're gonna result in a collision. And there are two ways, to, two main ways to solve that one with the open hash table where you just have a linked list. Each value is a linked list. You also can use a closed hash table where you add, you take the next open value and just set that as the key. And again, you have a constant one over one lookup time, which is the most useful part of a hash table. And again, what the idea with linked lists is that you just have a collection of continuous uh, continuous and connected nodes and where you you're usually given the head of the linked list the first node and in order to traverse the linked list you're gonna have to go through usually linear time nodes so it's gonna use a while loop it's gonna be o of n to traverse the list if you want to get the head of the linked list or insert and remove at the head it is actually gonna be constant time though and you can also traverse them remember in o of n and you can also reverse them using three pointers stacks and queues are dynamic arrays that usually lists or you can use re manual resizing in like C and C++. And the idea with stacks is you you want to add something to the top and then you remove it also from the top. So it's last in, first out. And the queue is kind of the opposite where you add to the back and remove from the front, just like a queue in a line at a grocery store, the same idea. And these come very useful later. And then for sorting, there are two main sorting algorithms that you need to know of which are quick sort and merge sort. So merge sort is an n log n, and the idea is you wanna keep dividing the array in half in log n time, and then you wanna recombine the elements in n time because you're gonna to have to recombine each little sub array in order, which requires you to search through, it actually requires you to search through n minus one of the sub arrays, which is n. And the idea with the quick sort is that it's also the same runtime, but in n squared worst case, depending on which partition you pick. And the idea is you're gonna put pick a random element in your array as the partition, and then the partition, each every element left of the partition is gonna be less than the current element, and every element right of the, of the partition is gonna be greater than the current element. And partitioning, and partitioning the array, you're gonna keep swapping elements n times, and you're only gonna end up needing to pick log n partitions, which is n log n. Thus, why quick sort is n log n, but n squared in the worst case, because you could pick a bad partition. Quicksort actually is much more memory efficient, efficient than merge sort because you're doing everything in place. While merge sort, you have to make all these different sub arrays. arrays. But quicksort is also slightly harder to implement, so it depends what you're looking for. In terms of searching, you have linear search for a regular array. You also have binary search if your array is sorted and it can do it in log n time because you're kind of dividing the array in half and half and half. You keep splitting the array down the middle. You're going on the left side of the middle or the right side of the middle in binary search. And binary search can be operated on binary search trees specifically in a way that you can actually search down in search for an element in log n time and actually store them in a tree structure. And the idea with the binary search tree is that each node has its left child less than the node and each right child greater than the node. And it also is gonna be a log n search. And deleting a node, you can have some kind of cases where you have log n times. That's not actually log n times. The worst case, you insert at the bottom, you're gonna to have to remove, uh, remove or swap elements up the tree, which would take n times, which is linear time. And then if you delete a node, let's say if we delete the node with four children, we delete this four, it has two children, you're also gonna to have to replace and replace up the node, which is linear time in the worst case. Heaps are probably the other most commonly used tree structure where you're either, where the root of the heap is gonna be either your minimum or your maximum of your array. That's the big difference between a heap and a binary search tree. And the for each level, if you look at the children, they don't have to be in a specific order. The children just have to be either less than the parent or greater than the parent for, greater than the parent for a min heap, less than the parent for a min, for a max heap. And Heaps are supposed to also be very complete trees, which means that they're kind of in this triangle looking structure right here. And the reason it's in a triangular structure is because this allows us to store it as an array and allows us to use these three indexes very, very easily when we're working with heaps. And if you need to quickly get the minimum or maximum of your data, you should build your data into a heap. 
And it does take log n time to insert elements and delete elements from the heap as well. Especially because if you insert an element into a heap, you're gonna also have to do that same swapping motion up the heap where you're gonna, you might have to swap the parent with the child, its parent with its grandparent and so on, which would ta actually take log n time and it wouldn't take n time compared to the binary search tree. And this would be called the heapify. And so a lot of problems can also be modeled with not only trees, but graphs. And graphs are just a bunch of nodes. Usually they have some value connected to each other via edges, which can be directed or undirected, weighted and unweighted. And if you have a collection, if you have a connection of certain nodes together, you can call that a path. And if you have a path that starts and ends with the same node, or at least they connect, the start and end connect to each other, that path is going to be called a cycle. And cycles get very, very important in graph theory. And we spend a lot of time trying to find them. And graphs are usually given as either adjacency matrices or adjacency lists. So this is what adjacency matrix looks like. Infinities are going to, are going to be where there is no edge and any, and any value in our matrix that is not infinity is going to represent an edge. And for an adjacency list, it's going to look something kind of like this right here, where you have, or maybe right here on this side, where you have a set of all the nodes and then all the edges that it connects to, as well as the weight if it's a weighted graph. And because graphs are kind of like in this like unordered way, usually there you gotta have to you have to kind of search them uh, in two different ways. So you have the breadth first search, where you kind of explore each neighbor of your current node and then explore your neighbor's neighbors. So you start at the root, explore its children, you explore its children's children, then its children's children, and so on. And each of these neighbors, you're gonna keep adding on to the end of a queue. The idea with breadth first search is that, again, it uses a queue. And for a graph like this, you can kind of visualize it as kind of an expanding circle. Like if you're trying to find the nearest gas station to you and your car is broken down, you're going to look for the smallest and then maybe the five mile radius, the 10 mile radius, the 20 mile radius, and the circle is going to keep expanding. So if you started C as your source, you would go C, A, D, F, E, B, and so on. And yeah, you use a Q. You also want to keep track of the nodes that you've seen when you're doing breadth first search, just make sure that you don't revisit nodes. And because you're keeping track and you're not revisiting nodes, this like nested loop, it's actually going to be O V plus E. It's not going to be V squared. It's because we're not revisiting nodes, which decreases to V. And then you're also the plus E comes from just visiting each edge once. And it's actually going to be V plus two E for an undirected graph because we visit each edge twice. In a directed graph, the edges are actually unique where they can, should point in different directions. For a directed, undirected graph, you would have to visit edges twice. That's where the 2E comes from. For depth first search, you actually want to kind of do a similar thing, but you want to go all the way down and explore the paths. Like depth first search is like exploring a museum. You want to go all the way to the end or like maze. You want to go all the way to the end, backtrack up, go all the way to the other end of a maze, go backtrack up and keep doing so. And like for a tree, you go all the way down, 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 and you keep exploring all the way down a branch before exploring the next one. And this is kind of, and it makes sense why this depth first search is implemented recursively because you're just performing a depth first search on one branch, a depth first search on the other branch, and so on until we run out of branches. And the best part about depth first search, it's also done in OV plus E, and you can also use it with directed graphs to find strongly connected components. A strongly connected component is basically just components where they are re where you have where you have like a set of nodes that are reachable from one another. And the way you do this is you run DFS on the graph. You also run DFS on the graph, but you invert the you invert like the direction of the edges. And if you're able to find a node that points to a previously pointed node with those two DFSs then you can have a strongly connected component. And if you're on DFS on a directed graph, again, when I mentioned cycles earlier, if you have an edge that points back to an edge, or if you have an edge that points back to a previously visited node, if you have an edge that points you know, back in time, that, that means there's a back edge. That back edge proves and shows the existence of a cycle. 
And if there are no back edges, then you have something that's called a di directed acyclic graph for directed graphs. And these are useful because these can help us model dependency graphs and just regular algorithmic instructions and decision trees. And if you can, you can kind of sort them in a way so you can have them as one long line. So you can do a step by step visualization, which is very, very cool. You also have minimum spanning trees, which are weighted graphs and you have, and you want to connect these nodes together but do it using the minimum sum of edges and the minimum sum of edges using a tree like structure so you're essentially making a tree that's going to be your minimum spanning tree and there are two algorithms to do this one of them is cruise calls where you basically take all the edges and you want to sort them by weight and just keep adding the shortest edges as long as it doesn't form a cycle and we check that it doesn't form a cycle in e time using set unions and log v time by just checking all the nodes because you're not you're not going to go through all the edges but you are going to you know you're going to keep going through edges until you basically run out and you go to v minus one edges prim's algorithm kind of takes a more greedy approach where you start one node you want to look at the you want to add up all the edges and make it into a heap so that you take the minimum edge go to that node take the minimum edge go to that node it's very similar to dijkstra's algorithm in a way and dijkstra's algorithm is actually kind of helping us find the shortest path where the shortest path is the direction is one source was the one node as a source going to all the other nodes and the idea is you want to use a greedy approach to kind of go and go to the next node that's the smallest weight the next node that has the smallest weight you're going to keep doing this and you're also going to use a min heap to do so and you're going to change the node's value to be the sub path leading up to the node and see if a new edge makes it shorter and that is data structures and algorithms in 12 minutes thank you for watching link to this github in the description below if you want to read more details i highly recommend it good luck with your leak code good luck with your coding interviews i'll see you